one of the things I really love about Chinese culture um, are the legends. The legends, these uh, mythological stories that have been created over the years. You know, they're stories of, of gods and monsters, emperors, peasants, um, you know, basic stories of, of good and evil that have been spun together, spun around these these morals or these, uh, you know, these ethical standards of the culture during the time. Now it's true that, that Western culture also has these legends, um, but often, you know, our Western legends are either based on religion, specifically Christianity, or they're like children's tales, you know, they're, they're tales for little kids, at least the versions of them that we have today that we know and that we hear are basically designed for children. As an adult, you don't really believe in legends and mythology, whereas in this Chinese culture, not that people necessarily believe that they're true, but they believe them, they believe in them, they believe in what they stand for and, and these characters these heroes and these villains, the protagonist and the antagonist that take part in these stories are, are very much real to them in belief. In, in these Eastern tales, many of them are based on religion, but they're, they're based on religions. They're um, incorporating different religions and different deities. There's hundreds or even thousands of different deities that are incorporated from many different religions from all over this part of the world. So it's this, this combination, this, uh, this God-like melting pot that, um, that these stories have been created from and adapted and changed and, and made to fit into the culture and into the society at the time. So I think there's a definite difference between Eastern and Western legends and mythology. And um, one of the, the Eastern legends that I really love is, is about this man that upon his death, he was made a deity or he, he became a deity or, or at least he became a really badass ghost that had the ability to move from the spirit world to the, to the human world. And um, his name is John Kui. I think I'm going to go get a tattoo today. And I went last week, last Saturday, and got the outline done. And it is awesome. The guy is a true artist. He pretty much freehanded all of this. He took a pen and he drew it on me. That, uh, the shark, the hammerhead, is old. I got that probably about maybe 15 years ago. And um, I wanted to just add to it instead of getting a whole separate tattoo. So, I wanted a Chinese style, wrap around the shoulder, short sleeve here, and went in there and talked to this guy and he drew it up and tattooed it on me. Uh, took him a, probably about an hour to put it on and um, to draw it on and then about two hours of tattooing and god it hurts so bad anyone tells you a tattoo doesn't hurt they are either lying to you or they're total masochist because it, it fucking hurts but um, getting ready to go get it filled in I don't know if he'll be able to fill it all in in one session or it might, I might have to go back next week and get it finished up next week, but he should be able to get about half of it done this week. Zhong Kui was born and grew up in the Chinese countryside. As a young man, he traveled to the Chinese capital to take the imperial examinations, which were a type of test that if passed would allow one to enter into politics or the military to somehow become involved in the social infrastructure of the empire. And although Zhang Kui achieved top honors in this exam, his title was denied by the emperor because he was so ugly. In anger and protest, Zhang Kui committed suicide upon the palace steps by hurling himself against the palace gates over and over until his head was bashed. 
Because he committed suicide, he was banished to hell. But through the use of his superior intelligence, and as it turns out, he was quite the badass, he soon became king of all the demons in hell. Last Saturday was about four and a half hours to get most of the black shading done. And then I'm going back today and it'll probably take another three hours or so to finish the color. They're gonna, he's going to shade the red in the front there for the fire and the blue in the back for the waves. And hopefully that will be all because I'm looking forward to it being finished and not having to sit through hours of torturous pain anymore. But it looks awesome. He's a freaking genius, a true artist. Legend states that during the Tang Dynasty, about 1300 years ago, the emperor was gravely ill. One night, while the emperor lay in bed suffering from his illness, a small demon appears. This demon steals some of his most cherished possessions and begins to taunt him. Then a larger demon appears snatches up the smaller demon, tears out his eyes, rips him to pieces, and eats him. The larger demon then turns to the emperor and says, I am Zongqi, the demon queller. I have returned from hell to rid the empire of evil. When the emperor awoke the next day, his illness had been cured. Finished the third and final session. Wasn't too bad. Took about two and a half hours. Filled in the red in the front, the fire, and the blue in the back for the waves. Didn't hurt too bad. Didn't take too long. And I'm very happy with the results. And it's me and John Kui for the rest of my life. At least this one. Zhong Kui's likeness is seen throughout Chinese culture, most often during the summer solstice, a day when many demons are thought to be emerging from hell. He is often depicted with his magical sword. Sometimes he is surrounded by his demon minions. Other times he's simply walking peacefully, enjoying the scenery. These various portraits are often placed on palace gates, entrances to dwellings, or near things of great value. Zongqi's image alone is believed to scare away evil spirits and to bring peace, luck, and strength to all of those who are close to him.